Coming up next on San Diego People, we're going to talk with former San Diego mayor and president and CEO of Promises to Kids, an organization that helps abused and neglected children. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone, to San Diego People. New findings show that the injuries among child abuse victims are becoming more severe in San Diego County. And here with me now is the president and CEO of Promises to Kids, the Honorable Susan Golding, former mayor of San Diego. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. Glad to be here. Um, Promises to Kids, uh, this is an organization that you started that does a lot of great work. Uh, I didn't start it. I didn't start it, but I did work with them. Okay. Um, but it's been in San Diego uh, close to 30 years now. Close okay. to 30 years now. And, and, and I was involved when I was on the County Board of Supervisors with uh, creating a partnership to build the Polinsky Children's Center. That's probably what you were thinking of. And that's exactly what I was thinking of, and thank you for correcting yeah, me. But no, to, no. nevertheless, you are a force in San Diego County working to help children um, who are victims of abuse and neglect. And um, on the heels of this new information that came out this week about the injuries, um, the child abuse injuries becoming more severe yeah. in San Diego County, um, I know you work closely with the Child Welfare Agency. We so uh, what are your thoughts on, on what's going well, on Well, we never right like now? to see statistics like that because it means a baby has been killed or hurt severely and the damage that occurs to a child when the child is really young we now know it's very very difficult to change it we've actually seen studies where the DNA of a child can be changed through abuse the reaction to stress can be changed and it is possible that there's an increase in suicide because of that later on in life that is stunning yeah. I was going to ask that information yeah. much further down the line that how do we know what these long-term prognosis is for these children who have been abused at such an early age they don't even have bones yet when they're right. three months old they're right they're, they're just still forming well most people have heard of the shaken baby syndrome mm -hmm. because purple crying it's called because you know you, you've got a young mother or young father they haven't slept they or maybe can't pay their rent, we've had bad economic times, the baby won't stop crying and they just start shaking the baby. And they don't realize that they can either kill the baby or, or damage that baby for life by doing that. Baby's a very fragile being, you know, it just came out of the womb. Even a baby, uh, a child of one, two, three years old, can't withstand that ki kind of force than an adult can use on it. And at the Polinsky Children's Center, there are infants. People volunteer to come in and rock those babies. And it's a very sad thing to think that those babies are there because their parents hurt them so badly that their life was in danger. What do you do to help educate um, parents and the community about what's going on? And, and then to find that these numbers of, of severe cases are actually on the rise. Um, I'm not sure if that's just because of reporting that's recently just begun on this issue or, or what, but what do you do in this situation? You take those numbers from the agency and, right. and what, do, what do you do with them? Well, we do a lot of things because we're, we're a nonprofit foundation and so we raise money to help the kids who have been abused and neglected. We have scholarships for them. We, we support them with gifts and birthday presents, trying to make their lives more like a normal life with uh, the same as a child who has parents that care about them, which they don't for the most part. They either don't care about them or can't care about them, or maybe they don't, ex maybe they're gone, maybe they were killed. And so these are kids who don't have a life like I had, where I had two parents who loved me, and they might have been strict at times, but I knew they loved me. It's a very different thing. These kids don't have a really constant adult presence in their life, so we try to replace that to I the think extent we can. that's really hard for a lot of people to understand yeah. that there are children in this situation who yeah. are living with this and living like this because it's not the norm. No, and, um, fortunately. But, but but when we hear about these cases of abuse that are reported, that's not we're not even talking about verbal abuse or emotional abuse, which can be so prevalent and also very damaging Absolutely. to a child. And we really don't know what's going on behind closed right. doors in a lot of families. So we're, nope, just, we we're don't. just talking about the cases that are reported and the cases that come to you and what you deal with. But but let's talk about prevention because I that's mean, my that's favorite what part. Keeps them from coming to yeah. your door. Well, the best prevention is parental education and also support. I mean, if, if you're a young parent and you don't know what, where to turn and you've got young children and you feel super stressed, you know, go to a neighbor, walk outside, take a deep breath, do anything but take it out on your child. Anything but take it out on your child. And all those things that we learn, count to 10, count to 20, count to 30. But you can also, for example, if you want to know what services are available, you can go Google 
You know, we're talking about these kids being 20, 21 years old, so I know they know how to Google. If you go to Google and put child, um, San Diego County Child Welfare Services, you will see a lot of services that are there and available to help you. You can call them, you can call us, and we will refer you. But I mean, most it importantly, like it's to learn how to be a parent, you know. And that is something that's not required of right. every parent. It should be. It should be. It should be. It should be. You are absolutely right. It should be, and it should be required in high school because we need teenagers becoming parents. That's another show, another subject <laughs> entirely, I'm sure. Um, but um, when you talk about all of these services that the county offers and that your organization offers, um, all of this help is out there, and sometimes it's, it's almost... Uh, people getting it too late. I mean, after the fact, after there has right. been some sort of abuse where they've, you know, been, you know, forced to go in some true. kind of parenting classes and stuff. How how do you get the word out to young parents well ahead of time? Aside from the mandatory parenting classes that well, we would like to make. <laughs> I, I, one of the things that we're looking at is putting, you know, parental education brochures and things like that in every obstetrician's office. So it's before they deliver that baby. But just because it's there doesn't mean they're going to read it. But we would ask, we, we also train all the law enforcement officers in the county and the district attorneys, et cetera, to, to teach them how to recognize the signs of child abuse or bring in speakers that are really up to date on what's happening. Because if, if, if they're called to a scene, they might be called to a scene for something other than child abuse, but if they know how to recognize the signs, they may be able to intervene very early on and get help for that family. Because the best thing to happen if there, if there are signs of abuse or families at risk, maybe it really hasn't gotten bad, then to intervene now and try to help the family so that it never happens. But one thing I want to make sure I say is that even if a child has been sexually molested or abused, that child can still grow up to be a good person who does not abuse their children and who is successful in life if that child has help along the way. And that's really what we do. We call it breaking the cycle because about a third of the kids that are abused grow up to abuse their own. So we want to break that cycle and stop that th those third that third from going through the same path their parents got. And the way you do that is by supporting them, by making their lives better, by sen by helping them go to college, giving them hope that somebody cares about them. Do you do that from the time that the, the child the child seeing them all the way through yes. to the to the college age we help kids from infants through college and they come into the center and that's where they they live well some of them but the polinsky children's center is the only emergency shelter in the county and the county of san diego runs that we build it we gave it to the county because only the government has the authority to remove a child from a home because his or her life might be in danger. A private agency does not have authority to do it, and nor would we want to. But once those children enter Polinsky, then we do things to support special programs at Polinsky, to help them. We, we support developmental screening programs so that most kids who've been abused have some developmental problems so that those can be addressed in Polinsky and in their foster family that we, they will hopefully go to. All right, we're, we've got so much more to talk about, and we'll, uh, we'll do that right after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody, to San Diego People. We're speaking with former San Diego Mayor Susan Golding, who is uh, CEO of Promises to Kids. And uh, our topic this morning is about the new numbers that have come out on child abuse. And the number of cases may have gone down, but the number of uh, severe child abuse, those numbers have gone up, especially in the infants. And um, then we're also seeing a, a lot of young parents connected yeah. to this child abuse. A lot of young, inexperienced parents, probably without support. That probably you know? does not surprise you, though, does it? No, not that they're young parents, no, because um, these are really kids having kids. I mean, you were talking about 20, 21-year-olds. You know, I think I had my first child at 26, um, but, you know, I was educated and I had support around me. It's, it's very difficult. I mean, I, let me just give you a personal example. I had a, one of my children cried all the time. I mean, slept for two hours only until he was eight months old. So you know how uh, it's, it's very, frustrating. It's frustrating and exhausting, but, but I knew what to do, and I knew not to take it out on my child. But we have a lot of young people who had examples of something else. Uh, they may have watched their parents be violent. It's very common for 
for parents who abuse their children to have come from a life home of domestic well, violence. Well, you or live abuse. what you learn. You, absolutely. If that's we what all you do. know, we then all that's, do. That, that's how you would respond. That's right. How would they know any different when they haven't been raised any differently? And, and they may not have any help. You know, the, in the ages, on the way over here, I saw an elderly gentleman. He would probably be offended that I said elderly, but he did have gray hair. And it was clear to me it was of Japanese extraction. And he was pushing the stroller with his grandson in it by himself. And that made me think of the day when we did have extended family. So if you got frustrated with your kid, you had a grandparent said, hold him, you know, or hold her. You, you know, did have a break. lot of families give me around. Give a break. Give me an hour break. Right. Yeah. And right. We don't necessarily have that now. We don't necessarily have that in terms of our families around right. us and, and extended families to, to kind of come over and give you that break. But we do have organizations like Promises right. to Kids and the Polinsky uh, Child Center and um, what your point was earlier in the last segment was that they're not hopeless. These children oh, who have not. been abused at an early age may be removed from the home. Um, you give them a lot of love and a lot of guidance and a lot of education. Um, how did, how, what, what is the trigger that turns, turns this cycle of abuse around? If, if you ask them, particularly if you're talking to those that age out, they're 18 and above and they're getting our Guardian Scholar program, they're going to college, they will say it's because somebody cared. Because for the first time, there was, there was somebody who cared if they dropped out, was there to say, okay, we understand, but come back and we'll help you. Just the way a parent would. It's the first time in their lives that they experience that. And the earlier we can get that feeling to them, maybe they have lucky to be in a good foster family, although most kids, most foster families are really excellent, but they, but they move from foster family to foster family. They may change schools in the, just at the drop of the hat. That's traumatic all it, by itself. It's very, very difficult to establish relationships. And so it really doesn't matter when you intervene. It's better younger, but our, we've got a guardian scholar, a kid who went through the whole system getting his Ph.D., Oh, that's you know, wonderful. so it's possible. And you said the cost of, of helping them is still less than the cost of, of not getting help. Absolutely. Nationally, about 3% um, of the kids who were in the foster care system actually graduate from college. About 10% apply, 3% actually graduate. Our Guardian and Scholar program, we, this year we have 100% of our seniors graduating from college, which is good in any group of statistics, but that's because they had help and mentoring, someone and, there and who And congratulations, cared. by the way, for that. I know that, yeah, that it, you know, it takes a village, right? Uh, a lot of donations, and there's a lot of volunteers as, as part of... Volunteers and donations. We're all, we, these are all private donations that we get. We don't get any government funding. Because people realize that every baby needs love and deserves a chance yeah. to have a good life. And uh, when they start out a little rocky, I mean, do you help the parents at all? What, what's the one trigger for parents that kind of changes their behavior and the way that they look at the kids that's and the way that lot, they... That's a lot tougher, and it's the county that tends, the county social services that works with the families that are at risk, and there are a number of programs to do that, and we partner with United Way on a lot of those as well. Um, but let's, you know, let's bring up those warning signs once again. Yes. We've just got a 30, 30 more seconds, but just potential warning signs of abuse. We're talking about sometimes uh, you'll see a spouse or partner jealous of a new baby in the home or uh, having controlling behavior. Uh, if they have a history with the Child Welfare Services Department or any kind of domestic violence, maybe with the spouse or the partner, a lot of times that transfers on to the child when, it, when a child you comes into the home. To that, they're so innocent. Yeah, and add to that animal abuse. We now know, okay. you know, you know, it's the powerful versus the powerless. And the first powerless is the animal, then the child, and it moves up. If there's violence in the home, it will end up on the least so powerful. So it, it, won't, it won't stop. It'll no. only get worse. It'll only right. escalate because Normally. once you get away with it, with, with something like an animal, then, okay. Yeah. And uh, your best advice for who to call? Call, call the, uh, the County Welfare Services, call the Chadwick Center, or call Promises to Kids. All right, uh, Susan Golding, we thank you so much for your time this thank morning. Thank you for the a lot time of, and attention to this. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a growing problem, as you, as you all have pointed out, and so we're happy to put a spotlight on it and help in any way we can. So. Well, you probably saved a child's life by doing that. Thanks for your time this morning. And that is going to do it for this morning's edition of San Diego People. Please join us tonight for the KUSI News at 6, at 10, and again at 11. Have a great Sunday, everyone.